Hey everybody, so it is MOT time again. Uh, I've been slightly caught out by this one. Normally I try and get this check done about three weeks before the MOT is due, and then I've got plenty of time to order parts in, do work, get it done, and then get it to its MOT. Unfortunately, I got slightly caught out and I've only got a few days. So I need to check this bike over, and I would normally only take me like 15 minutes really at most to do my quick once over check that I do myself. So what I'm going to do in this video is do the check that I do but I'm going to slow it right down and explain what I'm doing so that if your bike's going for its MOT you know the sorts of things you need to look at because these are the things that they look at. Okay I basically think of the bike split in half so you have the top half and the bottom half. Uh, the top half to me is about you know mirrors, signals, controls, electronics, lights, all those sorts of things. And then the bottom half you have the wheels and the engine and the suspension and all that sort of stuff. So when I check the bike over, I run over the top and then I run over the bottom and I feel like I don't miss things out if I go front to back top, front to back bottom. So starting at the front, you have to make sure your headlights aren't broken or damaged or anything like that. Uh, we'll get to checking the bulbs in a minute. Next coming back is the mirrors. On a UK MOT with motorcycles, mirrors are not a requirement but if fitted, must be in correct order. So basically, they have to be secure, they have to not be cracked, they have to be functioning, and then it's okay. If you have two broken mirrors, for instance, that would be a fail. You take them off and throw them in the bin, it would then pass. So if you do have a broken mirror, take it off before the MOT. There is another thing like that that I'll get to in a minute. Next is lights. Some bikes you can just turn the ignition on, some you'll have to actually start the engine. I'm half and half, so turn that on. Now I can check my indicators, so to the right, check the front one, look for the rear one, flash, then we check for the front one, flash, and the rear, flash. Or you might not if you just take them off, because again, like the mirrors, indicators on a motorcycle are not a requirement, because uh, you can use hand signals. Uh, but if they are fitted, they can't be cracked, they have to be the right colour and they must be functioning. So again, if you have front indicators which work and then you have like a broken rear indicator, you can take the indicator off and it would still pass. Now, that doesn't make it a daytime MOT or anything like that. Uh, amazingly, even though you can't really see hands at night. Just the weird UK laws, I guess. Now I have to start my engine to check my headlights, so I'm gonna do brake lights first. Uh, pull the front brake, look behind you, flash, flash. And then we need to do the same thing for the rear foot brake. So the indicators are good. The brake lights are good, the running light is good. Another thing you must check is if your little white light above your uh, registration plate is illuminating your plate. I believe that is a requirement. Uh, the only way I get my headlights and that tail light on is by starting the bike. I'm going to be inside, so yeah. <coughs> okay, so we know the headlights are working, high beam, low beam, which means both sides of the bulb are working. If you don't know, bulbs come normally with two filaments, a high, uh, a high wattage and a low wattage uh, for your high beam, low beam. If one of those is gone, no, no. And again, for that, you know, the bulb could be fine, but if your switch has got a problem or a connector or a multi-connector or something, this is why you have to check these things. Okay, so then make sure there's no obvious other problems with bits hanging off or loose up front. This is also about the bike not only working, but being held together properly. Uh, if it's held together with, you know, zip ties and luck, they might have an issue, depending on how insecure the thing is. If it's perfectly secure, it's fine. Like zip tie stitches, they're fine as long as they've been done well enough that it doesn't move or is in risk of coming off. Same for controls, you need to make sure that all your controls are nice and secure uh, and make sure that your grips are properly installed, they're not spinning on the, on the tubes or anything like that or they're loose or they're half off or they're jamming the throttle or anything like that. Uh, I recently had that with my heater grip slid down a bit and was sticking just against the housing. Well, as you can see, that problem is solved. Okay, so now moving down the bike, and you can see why I kind of do this top thing, bottom thing, fuel. The fuel should be in the fuel tank and inside the engine where it's supposed to be and nowhere else. If you have fuel leaks, not good. Uh, if your fuel hoses are old, if they're looking like they're cracking, if they look like they could leak soon, it's a no-no. Um, you might get an advisory on something like that, but if it's really bad, if you've got an actual leak, it'll be a fail. Uh, so you need to make sure that those are all okay. Okay, so then we've got the seat. Yes, the seat is part of the MOT, it cannot be loose. So you've got to have, make sure that you have a well-attached seat. I don't know if duct tape um, counts as good attachment or not. Probably not. Then you check your rear lenses like you did your headlight to start with. Make sure there's no damage to them, no holes, because if you're showing white light to the rear, that's a problem. That's where that um, tape, you know, like the red tape you can put over holes in lights, can get you through an MOT. It's not a permanent repair, but it can get you through an MOT. 
make sure your indicators are functioning, make sure they're all securely attached. That's another thing. The front ones were on my bike where they're flush mount. You know, they're not, <laughs> these aren't going to go anywhere, the flush mount ones. But these could if you kicked them. So make sure they are well attached. Uh, number plate, as I say, you need the illumination light. You need to make sure that your plate is of a legal size and it is secure. You must also have one reflector on the bike and that normally consists of a tiny little like 50p size one that you stick on your number plate and that covers you for having your reflector on your bike. And I've just noticed I don't have one on here because this number plate got changed for a newer one and there isn't a reflector on it. So there you go, perfect example, that wouldn't pass. I'm pretty sure most garages have those little reflectors on hand to stick on for you just to get you through, but I'm probably gonna have to pop to Halfords in the morning and pick one up. I mean, literally you can have any reflector as long as it's securely attached to the, to the edge of the plate somewhere or on the back of the bike, you're covered. So we've been down the whole top, everything looks good apart from that reflector. So the next thing is to go to the front lowest corner. However, I kind of do this in the middle because this is at the front and it is at the top side of the bike, but it's kind of to do with the suspension and that stuff. And that's why I test it at this point, which is the headstock and the front suspension itself. Uh, the headstock is where the bars, you know, the the tube that goes through the bike and pivots goes through the frame and you have bearings in there. You don't want any movement in there. So what you're going to have to do, stand the bike up, hold the front brake on and give the bike a good rock backwards and forwards. And in doing this, you want to see if you feel any knocks kind of originating up here. Give it a wiggle side to side. Try it at full extent, so you don't want to feel any knocking. It wants to feel smooth, no resistance or anything like that. It just wants to feel like, you know, it should. Now, at the same time that you're doing that, you're actually checking the front suspension because you need to make sure that it has got resistance and it's got um, control dampening and it's not pogoing around. And you can see this is going down with resistance and coming back up in a controlled manner, which is good, which means the front suspension is fine. Okay, so before we start at the bottom front of the bike, I need to just check one more bit in the suspension, and that is this bit here, which is the seals and the forks, which keeps the fluid in. So just make sure they're like this, nice and clean, there's not oil everywhere, no rust or damage, and the seals look good. They're not, um, well, this is actually a dust cover, the seals in here, but the dust covers aren't perished or anything like that, and these all look great. Okay, so starting on the front bottom of the bike, we have the front tyre. You need to make sure that it's not damaged, you need to make sure it's properly inflated, and also make sure it has enough tread. Over 50 cc's, I believe, is one millimeter over three quarters of the width of the tire, and the last quarter must have visible tread. These Metzler uh, Rotex Zero ones, which I was given for review a long while ago, are doing great. They have tons of tread left in them. Well impressed. Then make sure you've got no wheel damage or any obvious problems like that. Make sure the, the uh, valve stems aren't about to fall off, like if the rubber on them is really corroded. Then we need to move to wheel bearings. Wheel bearings are just you know, bearings, which the wheel spins on. And these need to be secure. If they've worn out, they'll have some play in them side to side. So the way you test this is you grab hold of your steering, make sure it's completely still. You grab hold of the front wheel and you try and rock it side to side while holding the steering. If your bearings have gone in any way, you'll feel a slight knock. It's very obvious. It's something like, if it's a bad problem, you'll really notice it and you'll see it moving. If it's not so bad, you'll just feel a slight click. That means they're just going to go. Mm, could be an advisory uh, to a fail, depending on how bad that little click is. If it's a tiny, tiny little click, I think you might get by. If the thing's rocking around like that and whirring, no. But you don't really want to be riding on warm bearings anyway. Not a good situation to be in, so get them changed. So then brakes, you want to make sure your brake discs aren't cracked or damaged or anything like that. You want to make sure they're all secure. Uh, you want to make sure they're in spec thickness wise and there's no big deep scores and you know big fat lips on them on the edge here. These are nice and meaty still. They will have a minimum um, thickness printed on them or stamped into them somewhere and then you can check that with some uh, calipers and verniers and see what your thickness is. So continuing on with brakes obviously you have brake pads. They need to be within spec. I have already looked at these pads, it's very difficult to show you because you have to basically, without taking the caliper off the bike, is look up in here and see for the telltale marks. In, in brake pads they'll have a, a cut line which tells you the wear depth. If you can see that, you know how much you've got left. Um, so you have to get in weird angles to be able to see that, but see what thickness of pad is left. Uh, but I know mine, they're, they're worn, but they've got a little bit of life left in them, a couple of thousand miles. But I'm planning to do some work to this bike anyway, so they'll get me through the MOT no problem, they're perfectly safe. Uh, and yeah, so they'll be all good. 
And then make sure you've got no leaking fittings or anything like that. The banjo bolts, the hoses, make sure the hoses aren't braid, um, abraded, make sure that they're not perished and old. Uh, if you've got any like where it's been rubbing on something and you've got a thin wall, that will be a fail because it's likely to go. And obviously that needs to be checked top to bottom. So I know it's all good here. When I checked the levers earlier on, because obviously the reservoir's up there, it looked all good. I can give it another look now. It's all good. So we're okay there. Moving forwards, or backwards as it were, uh, exhaust, make sure that it's well attached, make sure it's not leaking or anything like that. Make sure you've got no oil leaks in the engine, none of the hoses look really badly damaged or anything like that. Make sure your rear brake is working, obviously. We've already checked the lights working. Make sure there's no leaks in any of the pipe work with that. Check the brake pads, exactly the same as the front. And make sure that the, the lever is well attached and it's not about to fall off. Same with the foot pegs, they must not be loose. Uh, there must be good, strong, secure foot pegs, otherwise you can have problems there. Uh, continuing with the suspension, because we've now got to the suspension. This is why I kind of jump around, but it's because I move back through the bike. Checking the rear suspension, you need to make sure there's not leaking oil. You need to make sure that it's not being more bouncy, like with the front, if it, run, if it loses its oil, it becomes more pogo-like. You'll know when, you're, <laughs> when your dampening's gone in your rear suspension, because you start jumping the back end of the bike off of, uh, of speed bumps and stuff. I've got an RNG cover over mine, so I'm just gonna give it a quick peek. Yeah, there's no oil or anything going on there. It's all been covered this whole time, um, so I know that's all good. Also check um, like the connection points of the suspension where you can, and, and welds and things. If you've got a cracked weld and the bike's looking like it can fall apart at some point, that's gonna be a fail. Not the end of the world, a little bit of welding. Uh, moving slightly forward is you've got the pivot point of the uh, rear swing arm. These use bearings or bushes. They can't have any knock in them either. Oh, my baffle just fell out. I guess we'll have to pop that back in. Now, this is easier to do on 125s than it is on a hulking great big XJ6, but basically, you grab hold of the back of the bike, you lift it up, and let it sort of impact the ground and see if I can feel any knocks in there. And that all feels good and solid. If you feel a big clunk, clunk, as the weight hits the ground, then you know you're gonna have some issues. So we're all good there, disc and everything's the same back here, wheel, check the uh, tire treads, and this is easier to check the bearings, just give it a wiggle side to side. No knocks, we're all good. Shall I give you a little trick to getting these baffles back in if they fall out? So note, this baffle has a hole through it here, but it doesn't have a hole this side. So you've got to push this into the exhaust, it can go in any twisting direction as it goes in. You have to get it in about that far to meet up with a hole that you can't see because it's on the underside and put a screw through it. It's not as hard as it sounds with one little trick. Under here is a little rubber bung. And if you put the Allen key in, you can actually get it to go through the hole into the exhaust. So you can kind of see where it is. But when you put this in, as I mentioned, because the hole's not on both sides, you're kind of guessing. So what you have to do, this is my, my trick, Put the Allen key through the hole and slide the baffle in carefully and you can feel the baffle where it is with the Allen key. Little bit by little bit and keep testing till you feel it, the Allen key disappear into the hole of the baffle. See as I pull this in it's moving the baffle so I know I'm lined up. So just give it a slight wiggle to make sure it's in the right place then take your screw and be incredibly careful because if you drop this when you go in, inside here it's almost impossible to get back out without taking the exhaust off. So go up, find the hole. Tighten it up, stick the bung in, and that baffles back in there. God, I don't know how that fell out. If you try and just put that in and try and get the things to line up, you're gonna lose the screw, you're gonna have problems. That's the best way to do it. Get the Allen key through there, locate the hole, then do it. Okay, obviously now we need to flip to the other side of the bike and check the chain and sprockets. Just make sure that the chain is at the correct tension, you know, not too loose, not too tight. Make sure there isn't loads and loads of damaged links or anything like that. Uh, and make sure that your sprockets themselves have got plenty of life left in the teeth. The normal shape of a sprocket you know, it looks like this sort of shape, those U's open out. As those U's open out extremely, they end up being really thin like this, and then, you know, they're definitely way past it. So if those U's are getting really excessive and the actual teeth are becoming quite thin, that's when you can consider a fail. 
but otherwise generally it's an advisory. And while you're on this side of the bike, just make sure your gear selector is not about to fall off and all the linkages are tight and everything's securely fixed to this side. And yes, my chain and sprockets in the back end of this bike looks absolutely disgusting. And that's because I use this in the winter. It gets covered in crud and this chain and sprockets is going to get replaced soon. So I'm not doing much upkeep on it other than spraying some lube at it occasionally. And there we go. That's my method of checking everything. Say so top half, bottom half with the suspension at the front being kind of 50-50. Um, but that's how I check things and I don't think I've forgotten anything but what I'm going to do now is find an online checklist and see if they if I've covered everything that they mention in the way that I do it. Okay so lights working properly in good condition securely fitted correct color etc etc yep so we covered all that. Steering and suspension forks handlebars grips uh, grip mountings head bearings swing arm shock absorbers dampening effect we checked all of that. Next up is wheels and tyres, make sure they're securely fitted to the bike, uh, make sure your tyres are correct, the, the tread depth is right, the condition of the valves, yep, they mentioned that. Uh, wheel bearings, make sure, yep, yep, yep. Frame, make sure that there isn't any damage to your frame, distortion, uh, too much corrosion. Of course, on an old, old bike, a lot of rust could cause a failure, but a little bit light surface rust is absolutely fine. Next up is braking, brake hoses, discs, pads and shoes. Shoes refers to if you have drum brakes, you have a drum shoe rather than a pad. Uh, and it also mentions, this is good it mentioned this because I would have forgotten about this. If you have ABS, make sure that the warning lights, that the functioning lights working. I don't have ABS, I don't have to worry about that. Your exhaust system. Your exhaust will be checked to make sure it's securely fitted to the bike. Yep, and it isn't missing any parts. Lucky I found that baffle on the floor and it just fell out there. Um, and it isn't too noisy. Quite funny with the recent discussions about the uh, the noise cameras. Recent video, you might want to watch it. Lots of people have. Fuel system, make sure that it's working and no leaks. Seat, make sure that's correctly attached. God, they really have hit everything like it. Uh, wheel alignment, oh, I forgot about that one. Wheel alignment, when you adjust your chain on a motorcycle, you know you can move the back wheel front and forward, front and back. It is possible to have it slightly out of alignment left to right, so the rear wheel isn't directly in line with the front wheel that's if you've adjusted it badly, um, they will check that that's in line. But if you've done your chain adjustments correctly, that's not going to be a problem. Next up, horn. I forgot to check the horn, didn't I? Right, let's check that. Horn's working. Registration plates and identification numbers like frame numbers, these are things that will be checked to make sure that they are in place and legible and correct, apparently. I mean, if you change your engine, I'm not sure he's going to check your engine numbers the right one. I don't know. Drive chain and sprockets. Yep, we've checked all that. Throttle needs to be uh, functioning correctly. Uh, clutch lever needs to be working, not bent or shortened or damaged. So there you go. My method of top of the bike, bottom of the bike seems to cover everything, uh, which I'm pleased about. And I know I'm missing a reflector, but otherwise I have no questions about this passing its MOT. Of course, there could be surprises when someone gets on their head underneath the bike, if they do. Um, but I think it's going to be absolutely fine. If you found this video interesting or useful, please remember to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not. I'm on my way to 100k and I appreciate the support. And if you really want to help this channel out, consider joining my patron, like the people who went up your screen earlier on. It's only a dollar a month. You get videos early, you get to PM me and all those sorts of things. And I really would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.